Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Joe Rogan. We don't talk about Joe Rogan uh, very much on this show, but uh, I want to talk about this because something very interesting is happening in media. And this is kind of a follow-up to the video I did yesterday about media crumbling. There are a lot of people losing their jobs in media, but a lot of people that are losing their jobs, I think these companies this is a personal opinion. This is my speculation. I think they're taking the opportunity to get rid of certain individuals that are standing in the way of the corporation of the company making profit. So Joe Rogan just had his deal removed. He got a new Spotify deal uh, worth twice as much as his original deal, $250 million. Mm -hmm. This is after Spotify employees threatened a couple of years ago that they were going to walk out. They were right. going to walk out if they kept Joe Rogan on the air. Right. Uh, if you edit out his comments, because God forbid, God forbid you be allowed to give your lukewarm takes on anything. And I think the problem back then was uh, the vaccine. They don't like the stuff he was saying about the vaccine. Yeah, well, hindsight's 2020. Anyway. Oh, you weren't even allowed on YouTube. You weren't even allowed to talk about COVID at all You're when like it first started. Coof. The coof. Yeah, you had to really dance around that. Well, let's fast forward. So uh, last month, Spotify cut 17% of its staff. People were like, well, I thought Spotify was doing pretty good. Um, no, I don't think that's what's actually going on. I mean, I think that they're looking to save money, but I think they're also using, using the, uh, the zeitgeist, I guess the feeling of the day to get rid of people that cause them problems. And again, if you know, you're going to, going to target the King, you're going to aim for the King, you better not miss. And I think that's what happened. They were very vocally trying to take down Joe Rogan and, uh, he is the biggest thing on the platform and now he's got a better a better deal because at the end of the day, it's about the money, right? Mm -hmm. It's about the money. And they wouldn't be giving they wouldn't be giving him a better deal and more money if he wasn't bringing it. He's absolutely bringing it. He is the reason a lot of people subscribe to Spotify. He's got, I believe, I believe he's still the biggest podcast like on the planet. So uh, yeah, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna um, keep him happy, right? So let's talk about this before you get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. And yeah, that 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 uh, attempt to cancel Joe Rogan backfired tremendously because now he's getting twice as much money and he has a job and you don't. Uh, so this is coming from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, they're actually going to let him back on YouTube too. Now, that was one of the things. When he went to Spotify, they took all his, his videos off of YouTube. Now they're going to let him on YouTube too. Plus, he gets twice as much money. So this guy's going to like double, triple, mm -hmm. quadruple dip here. It said the fresh deal is estimated to be worth as much as $250 million over its multi-year term. It involves an upfront minimum guarantee plus a revenue sharing agreement based on ad sales. And he gets some pretty big advertisers because, again, it's about the money. It's how many eyeballs, how many ears mm -hmm. you have. Uh, under the new licensing agreement, Spotify will sell ads for and distribute the Joe Rogan experience across several podcast platforms, including on video on YouTube. The company said Friday under his previous deal, the show was exclusive to Spotify. So not only are they giving him, I mean, these are really good. This is really good terms for him. That shows you what he's bringing. They can't afford to lose him. Well, it's interesting to me because Spotify is going to sell ads and distribute this. So the, are they going to do this for other content on their platform? If you would, you know, could they could technically, if you're a big enough channel, if they're selling the ads and they get a cut and it behooves them to let you be spread in different areas so that more people see you. Yeah. Cause um, they're going to make money. So it's not like they're kind of shifting their business model in accordance yeah, so it's almost like they become, uh, I mean, I feel like they're becoming kind of like a talent agency or mm -hmm. like a, a, an advertising agency where it's like, okay, we'll sell you Rogan, but not only does he get this many millions of views on Spotify, but he gets another whatever millions of views on YouTube too. So if he sell, they sell ad and distribute for him, they're probably going to do it for other people that are bigger and they'll sell guess, it in yeah. one la large chunk probably, yep. like a lot of other places do. I would guess. I mean, I don't know that. I'm just guessing. So the new deal is emblematic of shifting economics and podcasting. By the way, by the way, since we're talking about podcasts, there are audio versions of uh, Clownfish TV and our gaming news out on Spotify currently. And we are bringing d back as well as Pirates and Princesses. Mm -hmm. Just putting that out. There. Just putting that out there. So go out and subscribe. You can listen to us on the go. Why you'd want to do that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you want to do that. Um, yeah, I said uh, Spotify is working to revise the terms of its deals. Yep, this is what you said. With top talent so that shows are distributed on several platforms to maximize their audience and ad sales rather than requiring exclusivity. Uh, 
So they're going to make money off of YouTube, you know, mm-hmm. even if he's on YouTube. So it does benefit them because then at that point they just become like a kind of like a, a partner or something. Uh, it's aiming to, to pay smaller minimum guarantees and emphasize revenue sharing. So yeah, maybe they are hurting and they're just going to be like, well, we're not going to give you a whole bunch up front, but uh, we'll share, you know, the ads that we sell. But they said that, yeah, it was a hundred million to bring him there exclusively. I don't think personally, I don't think a lot of these exclusivity deals are really that good of a deal long term. Cause I'm seeing what happens. And a lot of times, like you'll, you'll get somebody like kick or you'll get like, you know, and they're pulling people away on kick and rumble was pulling people away. But what happens is they pull them away from more popular platforms, which I think long term might actually damage them. Well, normally you would Spotify would want to pull it to their own so they don't have to compete with somebody else. But they're also seeing that if we share, then we might make more money in the long run if we are the ones that manage the ads and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They said, well, because of this, Spotify wound up surpassing Apple to become the most yeah. popular podcast. I think people platform. also yeah. stay where you find them, too. So if you're on different platforms, you have a better chance of hitting more people. <laughs> or getting hit by more people. Well, that's also true. <laughs> so, that, that's also true. Well, no, because we we figured this out in in web comics, and that's, you know people were like, well, how come you you guys are posting your videos other places now and so and and we did figure this out because it doesn't really. I personally don't think it affects you that much to spread out because you know if somebody isn't used to using Rumble or whatever, they're not going to stop using YouTube in, in favor of Rumble all of a sudden. If we fertilize more fields, we can grow more crops. That's Some people true. would argue that's spreading shit, but you know. That's potato, true. Potato, potato. But I want to go back to 2020. My how things have changed. And again, they're, they're saying it's economics. And I do, I do believe. I do believe economics are a big part of it because we know advertising spending is down or whatever. We, we know that. But... Overall, and this is the same with the media, you look at the people that are getting cut. There is a pattern. They are the kinds of people you would expect them to be. They're the kinds of people that are anti-money, anti-corporation, anti-company, and they're anti-profit. And they're not going to do what's best for the company. When you hire somebody, I mean, I'm not saying like you just sell your soul to you or whatever, but you hire somebody, you think that they at least are going to take the financials of the company into consideration since you're paying them to help you make money. Right. And if you're not making money, you can't pay them, but they don't see it that way. These activists got into these, these companies as journalism media, and they all, they all go for media because they all have communications degrees. Like that one girl on that one TikTok video, she had a communication degree and she's like, I don't want to work retail. Oh, that's the, there's, I thought you were the one that was going around and she can't get hired. That she one? can't get hired. Yeah. She was like, crying. I, I still got with stage. She's like, uh, I have two degrees. One in acting and one in communications and I can't find a job. I can't find and a the job. The truth is guys, I want to be a full-time TikToker. I'm like, yeah, when you say that, I know you're just staging this entire thing probably to get TikTok views. Right, right. But whatever. And TikTok ain't paying. Just so you know. Like they're not paying anymore. They had a they had a slush fund that they were paying people to lure them to the platform. They keep all that advertising money. They're not giving it to you. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a there's a there's a trend, and it's usually getting rid of the uh, the activists that get into your company and they want to affect change because they they latch onto these platforms. Uh, this was digital music news, and they even call it out digital music news. Right, this as far as I know, this isn't some like alt right rag or anything. Uh, three years ago, four years ago now. Spotify employees threaten a strike if Joe Rogan podcasts aren't edited or removed. A contingent of activist Spotify staffers are now considering a walkout or full-blown strike if their demands for direct editorial oversight of the Joe Rogan experience are not met. Yeah, I think we covered this. I remember when this happened, we covered it. Yeah, that was insane. That was insane. And they actually gave them some concessions, I guess, because I know some episodes they did edit them or they took them down or something. I think the uh, the Alex Jones one they took down. And I think one of the like the anti-vax ones they took down. But they said that's just going to embolden them. They're going to want more. Right. So and I get – get... so what, what is the, in the immortal words of, of uh, Triscuit Squid King? Womp, womp. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> womp, that's... womp. Yeah, that's his new favorite thing. Yeah, so now 17% of their staff are gone. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. Some of the people that they cut were the people that were trying to get Rogan um, canceled. But they had to re- you know, release a statement that they stand by him. And you know, every other week, I remember it. Now, I don't hear much about it now. But for a while, it was like every other week, this guy had to apologize for something. 
you know, oh, you did a spot for this soap company. I don't know if that actually happened or not, but you did a spot for this soap company. Didn't you know that the CEO is a Nazi? That must mean that you're a Nazi, Joe. Um, you said that you had questions about the vaccine. That means that you, you just want people to die, Joe. You're giving mm -hmm. medical misinformation, Joe. Um, you know, and uh, like, it, it was just insane. And they wanted him gone. And, and you know, we talked about the cancel culture and we talked about that D&D community uh, manifesto that we read the other day. And Joe Rogan was a prime example of that. Like they tried so damn hard to get this guy gone and it didn't do jack shit. It just made him more money, made him more popular. I think it actually made him more popular, got him more money and probably got these people unemployed. Womp womp. <laughs> that is like literally he keeps saying it all the time. It's funny. He's got his friends saying it now too. Oh God. Are we going to wrap this up? Yes. I feel like we can wrap this up. I just, I, I just think it's an interesting coda. Again, this is more, more of an indicator that cancel culture is getting canceled. JK Rowling still making money. Joe Rogan making money. Bill Maher is making money. They're all making money. Uh, Drew Barrymore, her show's doing better than it's ever done. And that's without those, those asshole writers that bailed on her. Mm -hmm. So womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.